breaking news and trending talk with Mike and McCarty. Mornings on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. One hundred one seven FM, seven ten Keel. Mike and McCarty with Jerry May in for Aaron McCarty, and in studio with us this morning from Visit Shreveport, Bossier. Uh, is that is that like formerly the Tourist Bureau? Is it? Yes. Yeah, we did a rebrand last year, so we are now Visit Shreveport, Bossier. I knew that. Mm-hmm. See, I knew that. <laughs> yeah. Tell Stacy, I, I already knew that. <laughs> Alex Einerson uh, with Visit Shreveport Bossier is in studio with us this morning. Uh, gosh, what a great week. 318 Restaurant uh, yeah. Week. Tell me about how this got started and, and what it's about. So it started eight years ago, and we the Tourism Bureau really started as a way to uplift these restaurants and make it known that we have a great foodie scene here in Shreveport Bossier. Absolutely. Food is one of the top reasons that people come to visit Shreveport Bossier. And so this whole week is really just highlighting, promoting, lifting it up there and putting it out to the world on a on a grand scale. And it's through Visit Shreveport Bossier. Yes. That's who? Yes, through Visit Shreveport Bossier. And then we also work with Lanyat Prime for a lot of the coordination with these restaurants directly and those relationships. This year we have the most restaurants participating that we've ever had in the past eight years. So I think the total number comes up to 61 when you include the events and experiences. Wow. And that you can go all over Shreveport Bossier. So you can find restaurants in North Bossier, North Caddo, South Bossier, South Caddo, Frank's Louisiana Kitchen, even all the way down there by Providence. They, we've got them everywhere. And so do folks need tickets? Do they need to download an app? What, what, what's the deal? Yes. So we have the 318 Restaurant Week app, and that app's going to break down all the different specials for you. You can go in. You can actually build a plan. So you can say, I'm going to go here for breakfast on Tuesday and here for dinner on Wednesday, and you can map it all out for yourself. And then you can also check in through that app when you get to those restaurants. And so when you check in or if you post online, hashtag Eat318, you can tag Visit Shreveport Bossier, tag 318 Restaurant Week. There's lots of ways to connect. And then, of course, those will put your name in a drawing for a giveaway of some of these restaurant gift cards. So these restaurants are offering specials. Yes, all week long. They have $10 breakfast, $15 lunches, $25 dinners, and then some of them even have event experiences. So on that app, it will break it down, and you can see exactly what special they're offering. And then this year, we also have a special lawn yap category where you can go to, like, Streetcar Snowball and get a snowball, or you can go to Frank's Pizza and get a cocktail. So they've got a lawn yap for their cocktail, and then they've also got a lunch dinner special for a special pizza that they're offering. And it's all going to be right there in that 318 Restaurant Week app. Are these all locally owned restaurants? Are they? Yes. Well, you know, they're going to be locally owned, locally franchised, locally managed on a local level in every way. Because that blows my mind. 61 restaurants Mm -hmm. are involved in this this week. This is a great way. I'm real bad about, I don't know about you, Jerry or or, or Alex. When I go someplace, I, I, I know what I like there and that's what I get. You know, I go, well, I know this is good yeah. and this is what I get, but this is a great idea and a great way to try something new. It is. Go check out that restaurant that you've always eyed on Facebook. You know, you followed them years ago and you just never made it over there. This is a great opportunity to go over there, get a little deal on their special and taste something new. And some of them are even offering like taste platters. Like if you go to Abbey Singers, you know, they just did their re-grand opening. And so they've got a little taster that you can order where you can get a little bit of everything. Like a little tapas. It is. Yeah. It's a great way to really check out some a new place or even show some love to that place you've always loved. It yeah. will, even just downloading the app, you can probably find some place you didn't even know existed. Right. Right. 61. That's right. incredible. Yeah, because my wife and I, we kind of fall in, into the trap. We have like our usual rotation. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Four or five restaurants exactly. we always go to. So this was a great way to to explore and, and, and find new places and 
new great things to eat. And it drink. really is. And the app is going to break it all down for you. It's going to tell you exactly what the special is. So you can see if it's, you know, a shrimp buster from Herbie K's. You're not a shrimp person. You might want to check out Drip Hot Chicken. They've got a hot chicken deal. There's really something for everyone. I think Louders is, is one of them, isn't oh, it? Oh, my right? goodness. Louders. Their and cinnamon the roll. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's the best ever. I mean, I picked one up yesterday morning and I had to get you're a couple get extra to go share with the team. The cinnamon roll and their croissants. It just. You're going to get me in oh. trouble. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back again today after talking about it. I know. <laughs> Those cinnamon, the absolute best in town. And they've got the Doc's Sandwich Shop yep, right there next door. And they're doing door. a special too, so you can check them out on the app as well. I mean, and, just and great And I love offerings. the little local places, the little neighbor, like Louders, like Key Mexico, like these little local places and, and seeing them do well. It just... That's what makes a city unique. It really is. And a lot of them are offering these experiences as well. So tomorrow night, there's an El Cabo experience. And it's actually sold out. But on Friday, there is an Ernest experience or Chef Nima from Nima's Cookery Corner. She's doing an experience. And both of those still have tickets for Friday. And those can be checked out through that 318 Restaurant Week app. And these experiences are really a way for you to for you to kind of take it to the next level. You, so if you're a foodie, this will really dive you in to that full immersion of all those senses. So Chef Nima, you know, her background is from Line Mountain in Africa, and that's what her experience is going to focus on. She's going to have performers that go with that cultural experience, hmm. and you're really going to get to dive into it and spend a night of an event because we've got a lot of award-winning chefs and a lot of these local restaurants that are just really really gems in our city. Well, this is a and great so get that idea. app and you can check them all out. Yeah, so 318 Restaurant Week continues through Saturday, looks like the last day. Through Saturday, yeah. And there's a lot of info here on visit org slash restaurant week. Yes, and to make it a little easier, you can go to 318restaurantweek.com, and it'll all okay. take you there directly. So 318restaurantweek.com, the app, 318restaurantweek, and then we're also on Facebook and Instagram, 318restaurantweek. Very good. Alex Einerson with Visit Shreveport Bossier. Tell uh, Stacy I said hi. I will do that. Yeah. Thanks for coming out this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me. We really appreciate it. All right, we're ready to eat out. I, yeah. yeah no, now I'm ready. I want a Let's cinnamon eat. roll from, from Louders. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm not supposed to have them, but... It's like Southern McDonald. I can't. I can't walk away from them. <laughs> Very good, Alex. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Tim Fletcher, Sports Next, one hundred one seven FM, seven ten Keel. Back with more of Mike and McCarty on one hundred one seven FM and seven ten Keel. One hundred one seven FM, seven ten Keel. Mike and McCarty with. Jerry May, my good friend from Channel 3 over the years, uh, filling in for Aaron McCarty. Uh, this is uh, this is another story that just is is very interesting. This redistricting, uh, the, the, the new redistricting map for the state of Louisiana that's going to affect Garrett Graves. Right. He's the 6th District Congressman. Uh, he's based down in Baton Rouge, but... Uh, he's kind of the odd man out in the redistricting process to, you know, create a new map of congressional districts in Louisiana because the, the courts, you know, basically mandated the state to create a uh, new map so that a second uh, African-American majority district could be made. And basically they carved out that funny looking uh, you know, it looks like a shoulder belt, seat belt <laughs> across the Zorro stretching, map. Yeah, the from, Z, yeah, from Shreveport all the way down to Baton Rouge. That's going to be the new 6th district. And so Graves has an uphill battle now uh, to to uh, win uh, re-election. Now, there, the interesting part coming up here, there is going to be a three-judge federal panel that's going to hear a challenge to this new map, to and this new district. Here in Shreveport. Here in Shreveport, here in just a few weeks. Graves believes that that federal panel will reject the new map and he can have his, maybe go back to having a safer district um, for him to win re-election. So yeah. if that three-judge panel rejects the new map, what does that mean? I, I guess does the that legislature's got to come up. They've got to come up I and redraw they, it? I guess so. Didn't was he? Wasn't he the one that came up with a, a fair and equitable 
I don't remember at one point Graves, uh, Thomas Presley. Thomas Presley, represent. that's right. He that's came right. up with yes. two maps that seemed yes. to make perfect sense, that right. seemed logical and fair, created the second uh, African-American uh, And not majority splitting district. Shreveport into separate districts. Right, and, and a district that stretches all the way to Baton Rouge. Right. So this new district basically kind of fought, you know, you know Shreveport down uh, to Natchitoches, Alexandria, and on down mm-hmm. into to Baton Rouge and you know how is a a North Louisiana representative ever going to get elected again that's a problem there and and the other problem is um the interests of Baton Rouge are not the same as here in Shreveport Uh, Graves believes that 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 the uh the federal uh, appeals panel will throw it out because the district was drawn specifically for racial demographics, and it's, you can't do that. Gerrymandering, right? No, 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 no pun intended, Jerry. So, <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Um, I mean, with this uh, with this uh, appeals ruling uh, here in Shreveport. But if if they uphold the map, then Graves is, you know, may have to either he runs in that district, which would be an uphill battle. Cleo Fields of a uh, Baton Rouge senator wants to run for that congressional seat, he would be pretty tough to beat. Well, what Garrett say? He, he says he's going to go back to TCBY? <laughs> <laughs> go back to his job that he had back in high school? <laughs> well, the, the decision he might have to... You know, you don't have to live in your district. In other words, he, he can run in another congressional district. He doesn't have to live there. Isn't that a weird That's quirk in the law? A, yes. But then he How winds does up, that make sense? Yeah, no. And then he, but then if he does that, he winds up challenging a friend, uh, a re, another Republican congressperson. Is that Bill Cassidy? Well, no. They, so you've got uh, Julia Letlow. Okay. Um, oh, that's right. Which yeah. may be the most logical district for him to run in, but which is over he was the big Monroe friends area. with her with her husband, the late Luke Letlow. Who remember he passed away right, right after he which was Which is how she took over. Yeah, right. He was like a pallbearer at his funeral. Um he would may face a tough battle to uh you know, if he challenged uh uh Higgins, may not win that race. He can't beat Mike Johnson in this in this district. Right. So he's gonna have a decision to make if that appeals panel upholds the the redrawn mass, but he believes that the panel will reject it, and then we're going to have a another fine mess. It, to, uh, I, just, I mean, the November election. We're talking what? We're, we're like eight months away, from, oh, less I than know. eight months away from that. It election. can't get here soon enough. <laughs> I just got goosebumps when you just said that about Mike Johnson, dude. Our representative is Speaker of the House. He is, but for that how is long? Surreal. I know. I know, I know but hopefully. If, if if I, I talked to somebody very much in the know, it said if he could hold on through through you know November or through the summer, that uh, he'll he'll be okay. Well, but then the Republicans have to maintain them. They're slim well, and they're getting slimmer oh, by the I day. Know, it's getting slimmer, majority. which is which is uh, a, a manipulative move. By, well, we've got to take a break. We're up against the clock. Uh, but coming up, Mike Spence, Caddo Parish Clerk of Court, is going to join us uh, on the Jack Spring Electric Newsmaker Hotline talking about some of these uh, polling locations have moved. And we'll get that clarified uh, right after the local news. 101.7 FM, 710 Keel, and on the free Keel app. Get back to the show with Mike and McCarty on 101.7 FM and 710 Keel. Well, apparently there are some uh, polling places that have changed. If you're not familiar with that, we've got Cattle Parish Clerk of Court Mike Spence joining us. Coming up right after the local break, Jerry May in for Aaron McCarty, Mike and McCarty. Thanks for spending your morning with us. 101.7 FM, 710keel.com. More breaking news and trending talk with Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. On the Jack Spring Electric Newsmaker Hotline this morning, County Parish Clerk of Court Mike Spence joining us. Uh, wow, two times in one week. We know it's a busy week, Mike. Thanks for taking time to talk with us. No problem. After the elections, you'll forget about me. <laughs> 
We would never forget it. We're going to have you on just to come out and say, how you doing? How's that? <laughs> well, well, Jerry mentioned earlier this morning that uh, there's looks like some polling places due to the redistricting. Uh, polling places have changed. Is that true? How many? Where are they? What say you? Well, as far as I know, we only had two that changed. Uh, one was uh, out Ridgewood moved to Forest Hills. Actually, that never was a change, but when they redrew the maps, uh, they just made a mistake in the, the precinct location, so that got corrected. That was done several months ago, so that was nothing new. And uh, we created a new precinct out in uh, South Shreveport. Uh, by law, we had to divide Norris Ferry up. Norris Ferry's two precincts had more than the law allowed. So uh, if if anybody that votes out there knows that uh, the last presidential at 10, 15, people were still voting. Uh, the lines were long. There was nowhere to wait in line. You had to wait in line in the parking lot. So uh, the Cattle Commission got together with us. We discussed it. Uh, Cattle Commission is in charge of where locations are. So we decided that uh, Ascension was the best place. Uh, they gave us permission to use their precinct, and that's where we're at. Ascension, that's a, is that a church? What is that? It's a, it's a school right across the street oh. from the previous precinct. Got you. Okay. So is it just? But, every, but voters in those locations have been notified, right? Correct. Uh, I spoke to a few people, and they said one person said they got three cards. Another person said they got two cards. So, yes, they've been notified. It's also been published in the newspaper. Uh, so uh, the Cattle Commission did all they were supposed to do, along with the Secretary of State, of notifying. Uh, another protocol that's in place on Election Day is uh, the Cattle Commission has to post someone at each precinct just in case somebody shows up at the wrong one. But anyone who voted at Norris Ferry that now is at Ascension, when they walk up to the Norris Ferry precinct, I have two employees stationed there. So they're going to ask them, and then all I have to do is just go across the street. Did anyone, uh, any voters in Southern Trace, have they been switched? Uh, I believe, I need to look at my map. Uh, you threw me a curveball. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's what we uh, do. I, I do believe the last time I looked, that was uh, part of it, but uh, I'd have to look at a map. So the best thing for folks to do to know where they will vote, what should they do? Well, they, they can download the Go Vote app. If they don't want to do that, go to cattoclerk.com. And on the front page of cattoclerk.com, it has all the questions that people call us about, one being where do I vote? <laughs> and you put your name in, and it's going to tell you where you vote. But if they show up, there's 568 voters who's, who was changed. So those voters, 217 of them have already voted early. So wow. that, that's, <laughs> that's good. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, the old uh, saying that people in South Shreveport don't vote early, they did vote early. Sure did. Uh, a lot of people voted early, in, yours truly included, that normally vote on Election Day. Uh, going back to the Go Vote app, G-E-A-U-X Vote, um, that app, you said people may not want to download it. I don't know if you're a registered voter why you wouldn't. I'm just so sold on this app. I think it's it's a great app, but it does not track you at all. And you can go in and make your selections because there's a, a section what's on my ballot. And you can go ahead and study, learn what's on your ballot, make your selections. So when you go in the voting booth, uh, you're in and out in a matter of minutes. But that app doesn't track your selections, does it? No, it does not. That it's it's as they call it, it's like a a dumb app. It's it's there for information, but it doesn't send out information. Okay. So, but bottom line here is that some voters in the Norris Ferry area may be switching from the church where they voted. They'll instead go. I think it's virtually across the street or so to to the Ascension School. Is that right? Right. Okay. And there's going to be many people stationed out there. They they don't have to worry. 
if they just still just want to go to Norris Ferry, I have the same employee that works out there every election, and she knows most people where they vote. She knows their names, and she can get them where they need to go quickly. And we're not going to have any um, food distribution at any polling locations this time around, are we? I have no clue. <laughs> He's not getting into that. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's not my wheelhouse there. I understand. Any any message to the voters uh, before Saturday, Cattle Parish Clerk of Court, Mike Spence? Uh, one last thing is when they go in to vote, the machine has to download the uh, the names that are associated with you. So when you go in there, just be patient. Uh, you know, Erin called me from the, the precinct. To the, which that, that was the first. <laughs> she and, did. She uh, called you from the voting booth. <laughs> oh, she was in there. And it, it takes a, a second. And we've trained our commissioners so to funny. when they activate the machine. Just to wait before they invite you into the machine. So hopefully in another year we have new machines and we'll all have big smiles on our faces because it'll be so much easier and quicker. And the machines when you early vote, those are completely different than the ones that are at the polling places, aren't they? Those are the new ones yeah. with the little chip card that goes in and with your information? Yes, it, they're very nice. Uh, the next machines will have... Uh, a machine, and then they'll have a paper aspect to them. Right. So it'll be a combination of two. Kettle Parish Clerk of Court, Mike Spence, thank you for uh, jumping on with us at this late notice. Uh, we do appreciate you, and uh, good luck this week. And if anybody has a question, they can call our office. We will help them. All right, Mike. 226-6788. Give that one more time. I may have interrupted. 226-6788. That's our hotline. we got about six people manning them. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Have a great right. weekend. No problem. Have a good one. 1017 FM 710. Stories of the Day with Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Kiel. Did I hear in in our news talking about California banning gasoline powered vehicles by like what twenty thirty five or something absurd twenty thirty two I think California wants to have a huge amount of maybe total be all electric car sales I I don't know I. <laughs> because it's certainly what the people want. Well, I know. Uh, it, it's you know, People had all kinds of trouble this winter, like charging their electric vehicles, like up in Chicago well, California, and the Midwest. they're even telling you, don't run your washing machine because the power grid is overloaded. Right. We can't right. we can't support what we have. Right. We're not ready for to, to for this it's you know, the most asinine. full speed ahead on, on, on electric vehicles. People don't want them. They're not – because – we don't have the infrastructure for them yet to make them convenient. And they're not practical. They're not practical yet. Look, I'm all for it. You you develop a, an, an electrically powered vehicle that will get me from here to Dallas right. without taking 12 hours. Right. Fine. Right. And if it's, if it's practical and doesn't cost 10 times more. Right. Uh, Fine, I'm all for yeah. it. I'm looking forward to the day when we do have the infrastructure in place, and it is more convenient to have one. I've I've uh, I drove an electric vehicle to do a TV story about them, and and they're they're great, smooth, quiet power, uh, you know. Um, but, but I've but, got a buddy who who has a Tesla, and he has to if he takes his car out of town. He has to, you know, you have to plan ahead, and he won't fully charge it because it takes too long. He'll charge it just enough to get to the next place where he plans to stop. That's too much thinking for, for me. Well, yeah, exactly. So, but it may, hopefully want, one of these days they will make, they, we will have the ability to, if you're going out of town, to uh, charge them quicker uh, and so that it's more convenient and, and faster, and then I'm then I might think about it. But. Well, right now the the people don't want it, and and you know the cars aren't selling, and manufacturers are filing bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. They're asking for government handouts again, mm -hmm. and so 
and now you're going to mandate? You know, there are those who say, look, instead of going to all electric, we should have put our resources into uh, more developing the gas electric hybrid, which I used to have one of those. It was fantastic. The vehicle basically generates its own electricity. Well, see, and that makes sense. Right, right. And then you get a lot of, uh, you know, you don't use as much fossil fuels, you know, that way. You're um, not going to eliminate the need of and, fossil fuels. Right, and you're not straining the electrical grid at the same time. So, oh, well. And, and by the way, let's get rid of all of our gas, natural gas products as well. Your stove. Yeah. <laughs> let's get rid of our stove, our dryers, our water heater. Oh, now, now I'm, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ruben. Ruben, wrap it up. Let's have to take a break. News next. Mayor Tom coming up after the news. 101.7 FM, 710 Keels. <laughs> One hundred one seven FM, seven ten Keel. Mike and McCarty with Jerry May in for the vacationing Aaron McCarty on the Jack Spring Electric Newsmaker Hotline. Shreveport Mayor Tom Arsenault joining us this morning. Mayor, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Glad to be here. Good morning, Mayor. Now I saw a report, Hello, Jerry. You you remember Jerry May, of course. <laughs> of course I do. I saw a report recently, Tom, about the. Tax sales tax revenue was uh, kind of much less than we had uh, you had budgeted for and anticipated. Tell me about what happened there. Well, I would, I, I'd love to be able to tell you what happened. I, all I can do is report that it was uh, we we had forecast for this year an increase of three point two five percent in the sales based tax on his, his, historical re- evidence, right? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, the January numbers came in at one point four percent increase. So there's a there's a gap there between what we budgeted and uh, and what came in. So that's something that we have to look very carefully at as the year goes on. So people are slowing down on their spending. Is is that what's going on? Well, we don't know. You know. Based on a single month or two months, it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to tell that. And the the December numbers were really strange. Some places had like I think Bossier City had a twenty percent drop or something like that. So you you would normally think there's an aberration there that you, you're not quite sure why it happened, but it isn't something that you would assume is a trend. So we don't assume it's a trend. We just have to look at it very carefully. And if it continues, then we'll have to make some adjustments in the budget for 2024. Now, the reporting numbers, are they're, they're 30 days in arrears. Is that correct? That's right. So what, what we collect in January is December sales tax. What we collect in February is January sales tax. So we, we were down we were down in December. But we were down in cash collections in January, which was December's taxes. And the KSLA and story reported, they said they spoke with people in the in the Shreveport, Bossier area. They said they're not spending as much because because of inflation. Well, uh, I, you know, inflation is one of those things that it could cause your sales tax revenues to go up, too. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know whether. Uh, whether that is a, a trend or just simply an aberration for this month is something we'll look at very carefully when the uh, when the February numbers uh, when the the February numbers come in for our March collections and see where it is and if it looks like there's a trend going then we'll have to look at our budget and see where we can tighten our belts because your budget depends pretty much two thirds on sales Correct. tax revenue. Yeah, that's one of the things that people need to realize is sales tax, as you can see from the last couple of months, sales tax is a volatile tax. And that's why it's so important to have that good operating reserve there so that you're, you know, you don't have a a cash shortage when your sales taxes are not not what you had anticipated. Would have thought that your December numbers would be great. You would think people would be out there spending a lot. Well, that's right. And we don't know whether it was... uh, you know you, that that things like 
uh, automobile prices or availability of automobiles, those kinds of things can all affect you in a month. And so you don't really know until you've, you've had several months going on. Uh, they rebounded uh, a little in January, uh, but not as much as we had budgeted for. So we just have to take a cl- careful look at it as we go through the year and, and see if there's a trend developing. And if there is, then we'll have to take some action. What action would that be? What would you have to do? Well, we would we would reduce some non-essential uh, spending and have to and have to look at some uh, at at cuts in the budget. When you say non-essential spending, uh, what mayor? What do you mean by that? And why are we spending non-essential spending anyway? <laughs> <laughs> well, good question. <laughs> it is a good question. When we say non-essential spending, we mean things that that probably need to be spent but don't need to be spent today so it's really a postponement of uh, things that we need to do i i i would like to think that we don't have any spending that's not essential to the service i, I understand sure it's good good turn of phrase though <laughs> good news is you you've got uh, some cushion you got you've got money in the bank which was thanks to i i think that was built up a, uh, an operating reserve of about 22 million because the re- right. reopening out of COVID, all of a sudden the city got a whole bunch of sales tax revenue. It really kind of buoyed uh, the city, uh, you know, uh, a couple of years ago. It, it did that, that and money received from the federal government. So, you know, the, right. the thing is we need to be smart about how we hold on to that money. And uh, this recent, the recent numbers just show us how important that operating reserve is. I know you'd hate to touch that. Well, I do. Uh, you know, what I, what my philosophy is that we should have a current year balanced budget. That is that we should not spend more this year than we take in this year. And that would leave that operating reserve for basically as a rainy day fund. Mayor, I want to talk just recently about the uh, bond proposals. Any uh, latest news uh, on uh, on Knight Street? How's the how's that coming along? And I asked well, because I Aaron will have want me to have asked. You had the mayor <laughs> on and you didn't ask him? Night, Night Street was bid last week and it came in under right. under the new budget. Not under the old estimate, but it came in under the new budget. So we were very pleased about that. Hopefully we'll be under construction within a couple of months. Within a couple of months. How exciting. I know Aaron took pictures of some signs over on Night Street saying uh, that there was uh, going to be some... Uh, uh, utility movement happening pretty soon. That's the first step, right? But you've got a big bond election coming up in about five weeks' time from from this election on Saturday. About five weeks from now, you've got a, a big bond package to uh, be concerned about. We do two hundred fifty-six million dollars, uh, one hundred twenty one hundred twenty-five of which is streets. Fifty-two of that one hundred one hundred twenty-five is. Uh, our uh, neighborhood streets, so we're going to be able to go into some neighborhoods that have really either never had work done uh, in the uh, on on these streets or have not had work done in many years. Uh, so I think we'll actually see some people in neighborhoods and see their streets improved. How are you feeling about passage of those propositions? Because recent history has not been very good with the with the previous administration we'll say that well the uh the response that i'm getting as i'm out and i'm out nearly every night now um uh, uh, i am getting a very positive response so i am uh, as they say cautiously optimistic well, Erin said she wasn't going to support it if we didn't get movement on Night Street. We got movement on Night Street, so I'm looking forward to her uh, getting back and, and getting uh, full weight behind this as well. Absolutely. Mayor Tom Arsenault, thank you, sir. We appreciate your time this morning. My pleasure. Thank you, as always, for having me on. Yeah, yes, thanks, thank Mayor. You. Good to talk to you. Jerry May in for Erin McCarty, Mike and McCarty, 1017 FM, 710 Keel.com. Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. Jerry May in for Aaron McCarty, Mike and McCarty, 1017 FM, 710 Keel. By the way, 
we were uh, earlier this morning we were talking about the eclipse as it was is it's going to be coming over it's going to be april 8th mm-hmm. and we're actually in a great path to be able to witness that uh, uh, a good 95 96% just of just a guess that's what it looks like 90 95% eclipse here if you want the total eclipse you could just drive north up Oh, maybe past Texarkana. I believe Ashdown is right smack dab in the middle of it. I think Dallas is as yeah, well. Yeah. It's uh, traveling from the from the southwest up to the northeast, and we're pretty much in that line. And we were talking about uh, the safe way to, to view it, and you had a welder's helmet, which is a great idea. Way back a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> I got my hands on one. Yeah, I could just um, I could just look at the sun and, and, and check and, it out. And I and I did comment, I said I think, you know, you can buy like the they look like the paper three D glasses. Right. Um, that you used to wear. I guess they still have those that uh, in, in the movie theaters. Yeah. Um they're actually like but they're full fledged kind of they're more uh, plastic now. Are they plastic? Okay. Not, yeah. But they they actually do sell um, eclipse viewing little disposable glasses. And we got a message on the Shreveport Security Systems message board earlier this morning that said, uh, yeah, my wife bought our eclipse viewing glasses on Amazon. Okay. So they are available. Don't just put on your Ray-Bans and think you can safely look at the eclipse. Well, make sure what whatever you buy is safe. I mean, I, I hope people putting products out there on Amazon and eBay or whatever are. I hope those are legit, right? <laughs> well, that's true because just because it's on Amazon yeah. doesn't mean it's it's. Uh, it chances are it is. I would think. I would think I would trust products purchased on Amazon, especially certainly more than more than eBay. Although I do buy things on eBay, I'm. Always on eBay. <laughs> Always. What are, what are you buying on eBay? I buy all kinds of stuff. I, you know, back when I was on TV, I bought most of my shirts and ties on on eBay. You know, uh, just get swell that's deals. So interesting. Did you wear shorts on set? I got caught like one time on. <laughs> with someone took a picture of me. N- never on a TV camera wearing. You know, well, sure, shorts, right, but. but um, and but now you can't get away uh, with it because they're they're like they're all full, standing now. Yeah, they're, you're standing and it's and you then know, you move against to, a blue screen. Got to dress screen. head to toe. Yeah. So, yeah, our buddy Fletch back there doing radio sports right now. He would have had a hard time back in the day. He was always wearing the shorts. There's so many legendary stories uh, of of the especially three, and I know it happened all over the place. Especially you know even ESPN those guys. When they're sitting behind the desk, <laughs> because they just probably have on gym shorts or something with their shirt and tie. Sure. And it's kind of comical to see, but it's not as uncommon now, I don't think. And now, my gosh, they're sitting in their den doing it over the phone or anything anymore. Zooming it in. It's changed. It's certainly changed. But anyway, yeah, the eclipse going to be April 8th. And uh, us in this area, we're going to be pretty fortunate if you're interested in that kind of thing. Now, they are saying they're worried about, like, cell phone coverage. It might be affecting certain certain yeah, coverage and things why, like that. Why, you know, would that why, why would that affect cell coverage? I, I had to look into that. I, I, don't, I don't understand why. I don't know. It's kind of like the, the old Y2K <laughs> fear-mongering. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to be able to use social media during the eclipse. Uh, there is going to be some changes in uh, uh, a couple of polling locations on the e- election this Saturday. We spoke with uh, Caddo Parish Clerk of Court Mike Spence earlier. Uh, hear what he has to say, and he'll clarify that for you coming up uh, after the local news. Mike and McCarty, 1017 FM, 710 Kio with Jerry May in for Aaron. To the show with Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Kiel. Well, Jerry May in studio, Aaron McCarty on vacation this week. I, uh, we were talking about the eclipse coming up on April 8th. It looks like locally it'll start around 1230 or so here. Okay. I think Apex around 145. I may be wrong if I'm reading that chart wrong. Uh, I am not an authority. 
I did get a text from uh, sure my, you are. My, Come on. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bill Lunn over at KTBS, and because we were talking about the glasses, mm-hmm. uh, that you know, make sure you view the eclipse safely. Right. You don't want to just uh, obviously you don't want to look up. You don't want to just be wearing sunglasses. You have to have approved glasses. And uh, KTBS, Bill said KTBS is going to be giving away glasses in conjunction with uh, Willis Knighton and their Eye yeah. Institute. Yeah, WKI Institute. Great folks, by the way. My yeah. wife worked there for yeah. years at the Willis Knight and Eye Institute. They are great folks. Yeah, they fixed me up, man. Yeah, they'll say uh, you can stop by the station. Oh, you had you had uh, done. Yeah, I've okay. got the yeah. The, this is not a commercial for Willis Knight, by the way. <laughs> just just <laughs> they're great folks. I'll be quiet. No, 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 no. I'm but just no, saying. No, they did. They full disclosure. They gave it's not me a, the uh, the the new yeah. Uh, Light adjusting lens. I I can see near and Coleman far. And and Weish. I don't have to wear glasses. You've seen me here. I've been reading this computer screen and my phone and papers, and I don't have to wear glasses. I, I should uh, make. I may go need to go see them because I have more, these readers that I have to, and then I raise them up to look down the hall, <laughs> down the table at you. So, uh, but uh, yeah, thanks, Bill. Over at KTBS, they will be giving away approved eclipse glasses in conjunction with Willis Knight and I. Good deal. Uh, we need to get our hands on those. I, yeah, I told him save me a pair. I'll be there in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, g- coming up, Mike Spence, Cattle Parish Clerk of Court, joins us on the Jack Spring Electric Newsmaker Hotline talking about uh, a few different polling places with Mike and McCarty, Jerry May, 1017 FM, 710 Kiel. <laughs> Breaking news and trending talk with Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Kiel. On the Jack Spring Electric Newsmaker Hotline this morning, County Parish Clerk of Court Mike Spence joining us. Uh, wow, two times in one week. We know it's a busy week, Mike. Thanks for taking time to talk with us. No problem. After the elections, you'll forget about me. <laughs> We would never forget it. We're going to have you on just to come out and say, how you doing? How's that? that? <laughs> well, well, Jerry mentioned earlier this morning that uh, there's looks like some polling places due to the redistricting. Uh, polling places have changed. Is that true? How many? Where are they? What say you? Well, as far as I know, we only had two that changed. Uh, one was uh, out Ridgewood moved to Forest Hills. Actually, that never was a change, but when they redrew the maps, uh, they just made a mistake in the, the precinct location, so that got corrected. That was done several months ago, so that was nothing new. And uh, we created a new precinct out in uh, South Shreveport. Uh, by law, we had to divide Norris Ferry up. Norris Ferry's two precincts had more than the law allowed. So uh, if if anybody that votes out there knows that uh, the last presidential at 10, 15, people were still voting. Uh, the lines were long. There was nowhere to wait in line. You had to wait in line in the parking lot. So uh, the Cattle Commission got together with us. We discussed it. Uh, Cattle Commission is in charge of where locations are. So we decided that uh, Ascension was the best place. Uh, they gave us permission to use their precinct, and that's where we're at. Ascension, that's a, is that a church? What is that? It's a, it's a school right across the street oh. from the previous precinct. Got you. Okay. So is it just... But, every, but voters in those locations have been notified, right? Correct. Uh, I spoke to a few people, and they said one person said they got three cards. Another person said they got two cards. So, yes, they've been notified. It's also been published in the newspaper. Uh, so uh, the Cattle Commission did all they were supposed to do, along with the Secretary of State, of notifying. Uh, another protocol that's in place on Election Day is uh, the Cattle Commission has to post someone at each precinct just in case somebody shows up at the wrong one. But anyone who voted at Norris Ferry that now is the dissension, when they walk up to the Norris Ferry precinct, I have two employees stationed there. So they're going to ask them, and then all I have to do is just go across the street. Did anyone, uh, any voters in Southern Trace, have they been switched? Uh, I believe, I need to look at my map. Uh, you threw me a curveball. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's what we uh, do. I, 
I do believe the last time I looked, that was uh, part of it, but uh, I'd have to look at a map. So the best thing for folks to do to know where they will vote, what should they do? Well, they they can download the GoVote app. If they don't want to do that, go to CattoClerk.com. And on the front page of CattoClerk.com, it has all the questions that people call us about, one being where do I vote? (laughs) <laughs> and you put your name in, and it's going to tell you where you vote. But if they show up, there's 568 voters who's, who was changed. So those voters, 217 of them have already voted early. So wow. that, that's, <laughs> that's good. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, the old uh, saying that people in South Shreveport don't vote early, they did vote early. Sure did. Uh, A lot of people voted early, yours truly included, that normally vote on Election Day. Uh, Going back to the Go Vote app, G-E-A-U-X Vote, um, that app, you said people may not want to download it. I don't know if you're a registered voter why you wouldn't. I'm just so sold on this app. I think it's it's a great app, but it does not track you at all. And you can go in and make your selections because there's a, a section what's on my ballot. And you can go ahead and study, learn what's on your ballot, make your selections. So when you go in the voting booth, uh, you're in and out in a matter of minutes. But that app doesn't track your selections, does it? No, it does not. That it's it's as they call it, it's like a a dumb app. It's it's there for information, but it doesn't send out information. Okay. So, but bottom line here is that some voters in the Norris Ferry area may be switching from the church where they voted. They'll just instead go. I think it's virtually across the street or so to to the Ascension School. Is that right? Right. Okay. And there's going to be many people stationed out there. They they don't have to worry if, if they just still just want to go to Norris Ferry. I have the same employee that works out there every election, and she knows most people where they vote. She knows their names, and she can get them where they need to go quickly. And we're not going to have any um, food distribution at any polling locations this time around, are we? I have no clue. <laughs> He's not getting into that. <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's, that's not my wheelhouse there. I understand. Any any message to the voters uh, before Saturday, Cato Parish Clerk of Court, Mike Spence? Uh, one last thing is when they go in to vote, the machine has to download the uh, the names that are associated with you. So when you go in there, just be patient. Uh, you know, Erin called me from the, the precinct. To the, which I, that was a first. <laughs> she and, did. She uh, called you from the voting booth. <laughs> oh, she was in there. And it, it takes a, a second. And we've trained our commissioners so to, funny. when they activate the machine, just to wait before they invite you into the machine. So hopefully in another year we have new machines and we'll all have big smiles on our faces because it'll be so much easier and quicker. And the machines, when you early vote, those are completely different than the ones that are at the polling places, aren't they? Those are the new ones yeah. with the little chip card that goes in and with your information? Yes, it, they're very nice. Uh, the next machines will have uh, a machine, and then they'll have a paper aspect to them. Right. So it'll be a combination of two. Kettle Parish Clerk of Court, Mike Spence, thank you for uh, jumping on with us at this late notice. Uh, we do appreciate you, and uh, good luck this week. And if anybody has a question, they can call our office. We will help them. All right, Mike. 6788 Give that one more time. I may have interrupted. 6788 That's our hotline. we got about six people manning them. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Have a great right. weekend. No problem. Have a good one. 1017 FM, 710 Keel. Back with McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. One oh one seven FM seven ten Keel Mike and McCarty Aaron on vacation. I did talk with her a little bit yesterday. She's doing well. Uh, you know, she honestly she hates. I mean, she likes getting away, but she hates being away. She just loves she what does, she does. Man. She does. 
I'll get emails from her, like, you know, I'll come in in the morning and I've seen, and it was sent it, you know, 218 that morning. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> God. Uh, but Jerry May in studio, uh, been filling in uh, all this week. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, for glad to. Coming in to do this. Having fun. So much fun. Yeah. Going back to our old Channel 3 days. We were, we were looking at a story uh, coming out of Texas about this this law that the Supreme Court is now what reversed about uh, police arresting, not arresting. Only I, I always get confused well, when they say they're repealing, not arresting, they're arresting. The, I'm like, what, what? So you, where, where is it? You might have heard yesterday Texas was celebrating because the U.S. Supreme Court allowed their law to take effect, giving any cop in Texas the power to arrest someone thought to have crossed into the U.S. illegally from the, across the southern border so and then take them before a judge and a judge could send them back to Mexico. So they're allowing law enforcement officials to enforce existing laws. Well, the the, the feds say that's our job. That's not a, the state's job. It's and the state's job to protect their own border. True. But they, so the Supreme Court said it. So you're going to get me basically, all <laughs> I know. hyperventilating here. The U.S. Supreme Court kicked this back to an appeals court in Texas so hours after the U.S. Supreme Court allowed the law to take effect, this appeals court said no. And they're hearing arguments about it right now. I guess they're going to rule whether they think the law is constitutional, this appeals court in Texas. They're arguing that right now as we speak. Apparently, they're hearing arguments on it. So this appeals court... Uh, you know, whatever they decide could be appealed back to the U.S. Supreme Court because the U.S. Supreme Court did not rule on the constitutionality of the law yet. They just kicked it back and said, yeah, take effect. It's back in the circuit of the appeals so court. So is it back where it's saying law enforcement cannot arrest illegals? As we talk right now, they cannot. That law cannot be Good in effect. So we'll see what happens. But, you know, Governor Greg Abbott has been really, boy, he's led the way. He made this a national issue. Oh, absolutely. By, by shipping, <laughs> shipping you know, sending. Them up north, yeah. Sending, yeah. It be, and so people in places like New York City and Chicago, yeah. they began feeling these effects. That Texas has been dealing with for right, years. Right. Texas can't deal with this by itself or other border states. So if, you know, if we're going to have, you know, effectively open borders, then the whole country needs to share the pain. And that's what's been happening. And that's why it's become a national issue and something that is really giving the Biden administration fits as they try to win re-election. Well, uh, giving the Biden administration... The Biden administration is giving us way more fits than Texas Governor Abbott is giving them. I assure you, open borders... Uh, let's let let boys go into girls' bathrooms and dressing rooms. Let's not. Uh, <laughs> don't get me started, Jerry. <laughs> Look at what you've done. So, but this is gonna this is gonna go on. So we'll, we're gonna find out whether the law now law enforcement officials cannot enforce existing laws. You well, come into this yeah. country illegally. They, it's okay. Yeah, they put a hold. Come on, on in. Yeah, they've put a hold on the law for now. Of, of this, of Texas police officers being able to arrest undocumented migrants and, and get them before a judge to send them back. Mex and Mexico aliens. says, this, well, yeah. Mexico says they won't accept them from Texas. <laughs> unless they won't accept their own no, citizens. Well, you back. know, because a lot of these people, they, they will Mexican, if they're Mexican citizens, but you know, a lot of these people are from well, that's true. Central and South America. Absolutely. Right. That are coming through the southern border. And now you've got, you know, you because could have. Because it's wide open. Right. And now you could have another problem with people fleeing Haiti, getting in boats and heading to Florida. You got a whole right. another. Uh, oh, and the Biden administration is flying aliens in by the thousands. Wasn't that bypassing amazing? the border? We found that by out the way. a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, we were up against the clock. Jerry, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm glad to Louis R. Avaloni is coming in tomorrow morning. We thank you for coming in, and I will be calling you again, I'm sure. Sure, why not? Because Aaron gets 10 weeks out of the year. <laughs> <laughs> 101.7 FM, 710 Keel, Mike and McCarty.